just give us your reaction to um, the pilot program coming out for juniors being able to take the ACT for free. I'm very enthusiastic about it and very grateful to Superintendent Hoffmeister for um, championing this opportunity. We have uh, juniors right now in our schools who uh, take the ACT. We know that it's the you know, predominant assessment that's used for college acceptance and for op opportunities to participate in other programs as well. And so the fact that we can offer this to our students and that they can all participate um, is, is a wonderful uh, opportunity and we're really pleased about it. How are uh how are your nerves? How's the excitement for day one with the kids? My excitement is through the roof. Um, this is my favorite time of year, uh, every year. It has been since I was little and, and going to kindergarten at Salk Elementary School. Um, but I just love back to school. You know, having been a teacher for so many years, I just feel that energy and that excitement and that new beginning. And, you know, being able to be the superintendent here in Tulsa and, and be a part of back to school in Tulsa, Oklahoma is thrilling. Some of that excitement we saw a couple days ago, a video <laughs> that is almost yeah. gone viral. Tell us about the dance video <laughs> and how that all came about. Well, we were, uh, we had made the decision uh, a few months ago actually to not have a sort of traditional formal convocation where we all come together and there's lots of speakers and very formal and that type of thing and and while in the past that had been done in a virtual way which I think was a move in the right direction I certainly remembered from my time in the classroom and uh, combined that with feedback that I'd gotten from teachers that their excitement about the beginning of the year uh, also includes some uh, you know, uh, nervousness about having the time to get ready or the, you know, needing the time to, to prepare and to be in their classrooms. Mm -hmm. So we decided not to have a traditional convocation. I decided to do some, some sort of a kickoff instead and just make sure they knew that we were thinking about them and thought that it'd be better to do a video instead of just a letter or an email. And um, I wanted it to be peppy and at, at a lot of these convocations, they're kind of like pep rallies, you know, there's music and there's a lot of energy. And so we were having that conversation and I don't know, one thing led to another. <laughs> and we ended up going all out and decided to just have a little bit of fun with it. It was great. Um, on, on a little bit more serious note, what kind of a reputation do you hope TPS has under, under your watch? Well, you know, we already know that Tulsa Public Schools has some of the best schools and best programs um, anywhere around. And so I think it's important for us to get the word out about those programs and then to expand and increase and support our schools uh, so that we have that across the board. And so what we want is to have a district that every teacher is, um, you know, would do anything to be ha have the opportunity to teach in Tulsa Public Schools not only because of its great reputation but also because of knowing that it's a good place for teachers to be and um, supports them and grows them and, and respects them um, but also for families. The families who are in Tulsa want to stay here and raise their children here and send them to Tulsa Public Schools because they know how great they are and others are, are dying to be able to live in town so that they can do the same. You just completed a huge accomplishment. You hired nearly 500 educators to start the year. How did you do it? Yeah, it was pretty epic, actually. We have started the year for several years now, at least five, with many vacancies, you know, averaging around 50 and as many as 80 vacancies. And what that means is that we have, um, you know, classes with long-term substitutes instead of a certified teacher, or we have large class sizes because students are divided up among other teachers. And that's just, it's not fair, it's not right, it's not how our education system should be operating. Um, you know, the teacher's colleagues then have a, a, a bigger burden and students don't have as quality of an experience. And so we wanted every student uh, to come to school this year and walk into that classroom and see his or her teacher and, and get a, a good solid kickoff to the year. And so we just, I mean, we just rolled up our sleeves. We uh, worked incredibly hard. We worked smart and creatively and made it happen. And it was really a team effort. Now that they're here, you have said the challenge is keeping them. Um, how do you hope to do that? 
the challenges keeping them, the challenges supporting them in their first year. Um, many of them are experienced teachers, but they're new to Tulsa Public Schools, and so they have different things that they need to learn. If they came from another state, they need to learn Oklahoma standards, they need to get familiar with our curriculum and the resources that are available to them in their school that may be different from where they've been in the past. And if they're brand new teachers, they have a lot of really cutting edge uh, uh, preparation, mm -hmm. which is a great contribution to our schools, but they need extra support because that first year can be challenging. So we need to support them while they're here, make sure they have a great first year. And then for all of our teachers, we need to make sure that we are keeping them, that we are uh, get, using the feedback that we've been getting from them this summer to improve our communication and um, improve our professional development and respond to the needs and, and hopes and wishes that they have so that, again, they, they stick around, they make their career here in Tulsa Public Schools, and they tell others why they should be a part of this uh, uh, great school system. Do you find it difficult to get creative and um, keep the teachers inspired when salary is sometimes an issue? You know, salary is an issue, and Oklahoma has to address that uh, head on. We have work to do, absolutely, as a state, and um, it is to the point of a crisis, and I know that word has been used a lot lately on this topic, but it cannot be overemphasized. We have to address this issue. Our teachers are professionals, and they need to be compensated accordingly. And we're failing to keep up with our neighbors, and that's really hurting us as a state. Um, but in addition to that, teachers want a great working environment. Mm -hmm. They want um, colleagues who are there in a stable way, who they can build relationships with. They want an environment that grows and develops them and supports them, um, and as I said, you know, respects them and um, engages them and listens to their feedback. And so that's everything that we've, um, you know, been doing this summer and will continue to do um, from here forward. How would you describe your leadership style? Um, I don't know exactly what words I would use to describe my leadership style. Um, I'm a big believer in, in relationships combined with high expectations, um, but high expectations have to come with the right kind of supports. Mm -hmm. And so I want, I want people within Tulsa Public Schools, meaning our school and district leaders, our teachers and our students, to know that we have really high standards and high expectations. We're all going to achieve and accomplish a lot, but we're going to do it with a lot of joy and love and trust and, um, and fun. One of the first initiatives that uh, you made a priority was cutting back on the number of standardized tests that students take. Why, why was that one of the uh, top priorities on your list? You know, tests are a really important tool for teachers. They've been around for a very, very long time. And they matter because they help us get a, a checkpoint on how students are doing in, in that subject or that topic. And whether they're little bitty and we want to see how are they doing with learning their letters or their sounds, all the way up to physics. Um, we need to make sure that our students um, are making progress and intervene when they need extra help and also challenge them and give them extra opportunities to learn when they have that ability because we don't want to hold any student back either. Mm -hmm. And I think that what we have to be sure is that tests are used appropriately and that they are not used as one source of information that makes a big giant decision um, as well as being um, you know, overused or um, you know, uh, when we have redundancies. And so that's what the work that we did this summer was I worked with the assessment study group and looked at their recommendations and pretty much implemented most of what they did because they did a fantastic job of, of studying what was happening in our classrooms. From your time in Rhode Island or D.C. or Florida, I mean, are there programs that you implemented there that you see might also be a good fit here? Um, well, actually, what I, there are a few things I would say about that. I mean, one is that Tulsa has um, had some quite a lot of success with um, world language programs, with immersion and dual language. Mm -hmm. And I do have experience with those programs in other places. But, boy, Tulsa has a lot going on in that area, and I think there's a tremendous amount of enthusiasm 
for it among parents and students and teachers. And I would really love to see our community continue to grow and expand those programs because I think it's something that sets us apart. Um, we also have a huge opportunity because of the wonderful support from our community um, in our most recent bond as well as um, some, uh, some of the past bonds to um, in, enhance our technology capabilities and to have uh, a, you know one-to-one -one device for students and to move to more what's called an education blended learning which just means a much more of an integration of technology into the classrooms and that's important because it helps us to personalize learning for each student but it also um, brings the learning into the 21st century and the world in which our students are not only going to go into when they go off and, and go into the work world, but the world in which they're currently living. Right. And so it's, it's much more engaging for them and also really important for their preparation. And so we, um, I fortunately have quite a lot of experience in that area. We did a lot of that work in Rhode Island and we have great people here um, in Tulsa who are launching into that now. And so that's gonna be an area where I think people should really keep their eye on what we do in those areas. Mayor Bartlett in his State of the City address yesterday talked about increasing uh, vocational uh, education opportunities and career training. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I am absolutely thrilled about the opportunities that are in our community in this area um, and with higher education. So we have, uh, you know, Tulsa Technology Center mm -hmm. and then at our, at our institutions of higher education from t Tulsa Community College, um, OU Tulsa, OSU Tulsa, Langston, you know, uh, University of Tulsa, we are so rich in opportunity. And so whatever students' um, interests are, there will be ways for them to engage. And I certainly am a big fan of the programming that is in place with Tulsa Tech. I'm excited about the Aeronautics Academy that's, that's launched already mm -hmm. this year and hope to, not just hope to, have already talked to and plan to work closely with Tulsa Tech um, and expand that kind of opportunity in Tulsa Public Schools. As we go into the first day with the kids, um, always tough and, and maybe rough around the edges in some facets, but uh, what are some of the biggest challenges you see in the first couple weeks? Well, um, we, you know, the first couple of weeks we have to make sure that we have all of our staffing in the right places, you know, enrollment can fluctuate and so we have to keep a close eye on that. Um, right here in this room we have a setup of, of a whole bank of telephones because we have set up a, we're going to have a situation room in here and we've set up a hotline so that our schools can easily reach out to us if they have any questions about or concerns or needs around facilities or enrollment or materials or whatever it might be. And so we're ready to handle those first day um, issues in those first few days as things settle out. Um, you know, we, uh, we're just excited to welcome our brand new teachers and, uh, and, ex and enjoy our wonderful renovations that have happened this summer because we've had a quite a lot, actually I think a pretty historical amount of renovation happening in the district this summer and some of that's wrapping up as we speak, <laughs> making sure that we have the schools cleaned up and ready for students to come back. And a few of those projects will continue in the, in the upcoming, week, you know, beginning weeks of school just um, in order to make sure that libraries are fully functioning and all materials and so forth are in place. But really wonderful results from that and we're very grateful to the community for their support in keeping our facilities um, safe and um, engaging and uh, conducive to learning. And where will you be on day one? Will you be at headquarters or out and about or kind of a combination? I will be out and about, so, you know, starting at 5.30 in the morning, going out to uh, spend some time with our bus drivers as they leave to go get our students. I'll be riding the bus for um, part of the morning to some different school sites, um, walking to school with a family, uh, eating lunch with some students at another school, and essentially just spending my day throughout the day at different school sites, concluding with um, a, a group of teachers at, w at one of our sites and uh, then coming back here to debrief with my team and see what we need to do to get ready for Friday. Obviously, kids are kids and you, you're gonna love them wherever you are, but um, is there a special vested interest being here in Tulsa, home? Yeah. 
definitely. Can you talk about uh, <laughs> why, um, why that is? Yeah, it's just really special. I'm going to Salk tomorrow. That's where I attended kindergarten, and I just am really happy to be home. Wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate it.